This snowflake topic video is about data movement, which makes up about 14% of the SnowPro core exam. If you haven't yet watched my introduction video, I really recommend that you watch it first. Data loading into Snowflake can be done via bulk loading or by continuous loading using Snowpipe. For bulk loading, batches of data from files already available in cloud storage are loaded into tables using the copy command. Bulk loading relies on user-provided virtual warehouses. It is recommended to dedicate separate warehouses for loading and querying operations to optimize performance of each. Snowflake does support transforming data while loading it, and those options include column reordering, column omission, casts, and truncating text strings that exceed the target column length. The copy and insert commands can be used for loading data, and neither of them are blocking commands. When loading files from a stage, the copy command supports loading by path, by specifying a list of files, or by using pattern matching. The copy into command can be used to move files from any stage into a table or to unload files from tables and put them into any kind of stage. Note that the files must already be staged to be loaded to an existing table. The put command, which can be run from Snow SQL but not the web UI, supports uploading to internal but not external stages. When data is staged to a Snowflake internal staging area using the put command, the data is encrypted on the client's machine. It is not always necessary to load data before running queries. External tables enable querying existing data stored in external data storage without first loading it into Snowflake. Users can create materialized views on subsets of data for improved query performance. Continuous loading using Snowpipe is an option that is designed to load small volumes of data and incrementally make them available. Snowpipe loads data within minutes after files are added to an internal or external stage and submitted for ingestion. An important distinction is that Snowpipe uses compute resource provided by Snowflake rather than user-managed virtual warehouses. All data types are supported by, for Snowpipe, and the Snowpipe load history is stored in the metadata for the pipe for 14 days. Unloading data into a Snowflake stage occurs in two steps. First, the copy into command is used to copy the data from the Snowflake database table into a Snowflake stage. This stage does require a running, current virtual warehouse for the session. In the next step, the get command is used to download data files to your local file system. Note that the get command supports downloading files from internal but not external stages. Just as a reminder about stage types, there are three different stage types, named, user, and table. User and table stages are automatically available and do not need to be created or configured. Snowflake named stages can be either internal or external. External stages require a cloud storage provider. An account can have multiple named stages and can make use of all three cloud platform providers simultaneously. Note that regardless of the cloud provider platform chosen when setting up the Snowflake account, an account can have named external stages on any of the three platforms. To configure an external stage, you need to define the stage object in Snowflake. You also need to specify the cloud storage location and the cloud access credentials. And finally, users can query a stage object. You'll find more topic videos on YouTube and be sure to reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn and let me know if you have any questions or if I can help you on your Snowflake certification journey. Thanks so much.